Friday, November 15th, 2024, at precisely 1.25 p.m. local time, 18 gigabytes of allegedly leaked government documents, files from the CIA, the NSA, the DOD, the FBI, and especially from inside an infamous Area 51 covert facility, were posted online to a high-profile hacker community called Breach Forums. Over 1,800 files, gigabytes of video, and a somewhat sinister implication, by social media users at least, that the data had been exfiltrated, a term that implies some sort of escape taking place wherein the data is covertly removed without authorization. For me, that's a fascinating prospect, one that could potentially make for an extremely popular YouTube video, but rather than go down the road of clickbait and hyperbolic exaggeration, let's take a look at what really happened. I'll start with this. Breach Forums is a rather infamous community housing a very large number of cyber criminals that has been targeted and disrupted numerous times over the years by the FBI. Originally known as Raid Forums, which operated unimpeded from 2015 all the way through 2022, the website was widely regarded as the central hub of online data breaches. However, in April of 2022, announced by the Department of Justice, the website was seized, temporarily shutting down, while the alleged chief administrator of the site, known by his screen name Omnipotent, was arrested. This decisive maneuver by law enforcement left a vacuum, and it wasn't long until that vacuum was filled by a man named Pom Pom Perrin, who launched a new website called Breached.co, commonly known as Breach Forums. Pom Pom Perrin, now serving a 20-year supervised release sentence on charges of conspiracy to commit access device fraud, among others, had famously breached the FBI's own law enforcement sharing portal in 2021, then using that infrastructure to send out tens of thousands of hoax emails from the FBI's own address. Funny? Sure. But they tend to take that sort of thing very seriously, and in 2023, he was arrested, later sentenced, in the early days of 2024. Over the next several months, breached forums encountered a variety of issues. DDoS attacks, site shutdowns, and claims of compromised infrastructure, just to name a few of them. But eventually, after cycling through a multitude of domain names like breachforums.cx or breachforums.is, the website was once again shut down by law enforcement, displaying a message reading, quote, Breach Forums is under control of the FBI. The website has been taken down by the FBI and the DOJ with assistance from international providers. We are reviewing this site's backend data. If you have information to report about cyber criminal activity on Breach Forums, please contact us." End quote. That very well could have been the end of the story, but it's not, because law enforcement is a perpetual game of cat and mouse, where any action you take or any content you shut down is likely replaced just a few days later. In this case, that's exactly what happened. And now breachforums.st is alive and well, which is where the supposed leak of Area 51 files has now taken place. Well, having heard about the leak and deciding that I wanted to investigate it for myself, I flipped on my VPN. If you want a VPN subscription for yourself, by the way, you can find a discount link down below in the video description. Flipped on my VPN and a virtual machine as well and went on over to check it out. What I found, as I said earlier, was an 18 gigabyte collection of data with everything from videos to government documents, memos, spreadsheets, and intelligence reports, but it didn't take long to realize something. This wasn't exactly leaked data, contrary to what the social media posts that are currently talking about it have indicated. This was mostly FOIA requested data, which was available elsewhere online. For anyone who doesn't know, FOIA, F-O-I-A, means Freedom of Information Act, and it's a mechanism to obtain declassified government documents if you fill out a proper request. There's actually huge online repositories of this info all over the place, but a pretty hefty amount of this supposedly leaked information was from this archive right here, called the Black Vault. There's more. Some of it comes from the FBI's own public records. Some of it comes from a site called Majestic Documents. And even more of it you can just find in random places all over the internet because it's public. But the truly interesting thing was that as soon as you call something leaked, people get a sense that they shouldn't be looking at it. And when you feel like you shouldn't be looking at something, especially something classified, sometimes that makes people a lot more interested to see it. Or more likely, what was desired in this case, people become much more likely to pay money for the option of seeing it. The honest-to-God truth here is that these files aren't leaked. They're not stolen or exfiltrated or classified. Not anymore, at least. But that certainly doesn't mean that there's nothing interesting to see, and it also doesn't mean that there's nothing to talk about. Having come this far already, and also being rather interested in this kind of stuff to begin with for myself, I started reading, and while well, some of it I'd certainly seen before, some of it was new to me, some of it was actually pretty crazy. I could probably spend like, I don't know, five or six hours maybe going over this stuff in a long form video. If people are interested, maybe I will. But for right now, for the sake of time, I'll just compress it down to a couple of examples of what I find to be the most interesting content 
beginning with this, which is an analytical report made to the commanding general of Ohio's AFMC, which is the Air Force Material Command, about a, quote, flying saucer. The report contains a description of capabilities, architecture, and design, but the part that immediately piqued my interest was this, quote, Aerodynamics and design evaluation studies performed by the Aircraft, Power Plant, and Propeller Laboratories of Engineering, Division T3 personnel, has concluded that some nation has reached a stage of flight development in which the present ideas are entirely obsolete, end quote. Anyone more knowledgeable on this subject, more knowledgeable than me, that is, feel free to correct like all this down below in the comment section. I actually super very much welcome that on this subject, but that sounds like they're saying it makes current generation flight technology at the time obsolete because of how advanced it is. And when you get further down to the actual physical description of the craft itself, you start to see why. Quote, a general description of the craft is presented. One, metallic skin of a highly polished finish. Further down, craft designed for high altitude flight. Automatic exhaust orifices were identified. A gyro-controlled wing stabilizer apparently maintains craft in hover mode. Power plant may consist of a spherical reactor, hydrogen isotope type, connected to propulsion motors. 100 foot in diameter, with central section approximately 30 feet. Central cabin may have three flight decks, top level for flight control, central section for equipment, and lower section for power plant and landing gear. Circular wing may have rotating section and adjustable leading edge. Top dome may have the ability to recede into central section for high performance operations. Flight instruments and controls are activated by optical waveguide fibers similar to glass rods, except they are flexible and have a plastic cladding wrap. All functions may be operated by touch sensitive or texture sensing stimuli. Instruments are covered by a plastic plate and seem to be color coded, end quote. So a 100 foot shiny metal circle with a spherical hydrogen isotope type reactor operating some sort of hover mode with color-coded plastic-covered controls that somehow have flexible glass rod-style optical fibers connecting them, or something like that, whatever that means. Pardon my language here, okay? But they don't know what the fuck this thing is, and it certainly doesn't sound like any sort of technology that we've ever seen publicly from the military, or that's come out of the private sector yet, and this was 24 years ago. I don't consider myself like a UFO conspiracy theorist, but... It sure sounds to me like they have stuff that they don't know what the hell it is and they're trying to identify it and it's way more advanced than anything they've ever seen and they're just saying some nation must be responsible for this but they actually don't know. I don't know. It's hard not to be a conspiracy theorist these days because some of the stuff that they declassify, at least for the UFO angle, some of the stuff that like the Navy declassifies can't really be explained by anything that we know of, right, or our laws of physics. Some of the things that they show, like the way it moves, the direction against the wind, things like that, it doesn't really make any sense. Maybe there is an explanation, but I certainly don't know what it is. Another fragment that I found in all of these documents that I find incredibly interesting is from a declassified analysis of an interview with President Truman, which has a section that goes like this, quote, he was asked if he knew that the Central Intelligence Agency had engaged in foreign and domestic covert operations to secure evidence from various sources. He was also asked the embarrassing question, did you authorize Operation Majestic 12, which refers to a hotly disputed secret government committee for investigating UFO crash sites. I haven't seen a ton of evidence on that one way or another about if it actually existed. But anyway, he was asked about Majestic 12 to resume the quote, to which he replied, I never had any thought about it after leaving office. Continuing on, it was not my intention when I set up the CIA, it would be injected into strange activities of that sort. He was upset when this subject was brought up, and it was sensed that Mr. Truman was being coy and evasive. When he was shown documents, which he signed, he seemed very surprised and asked, where did you get this? He was told that they came from the CIA. He quietly and without further comment said, oh. After some reflection, he said, Congress was in for a greater surprise for what legislators were asked to create in 1947, and what they thought they were creating was an intelligence arm of the government. What they did was hand the CIA, by that I mean the Director of Central Intelligence, the authority to withhold UFO information from the public, including Congress, end quote. See, I find that to be extremely interesting in the context of modern governmental secrecy, especially alongside some of the other documents in this trove, I'll call it, because it's not really a leak. And the list of things that I could talk about goes on and on and on. There's documents about Marilyn Monroe, Operation Paperclip, which is where the U.S. devoted an entire intelligence apparatus to recruiting German Nazi scientists after the war. 
There's stuff about bioweapons, the Kennedy assassination, Nikola Tesla even, and the list goes on. It's certainly captivating, at least to me on a personal level, but the more you read, the more you realize that this definitely isn't a data breach from Area 51. These documents are not current. Many of them are about unrelated topics that have nothing to do with UFOs in the first place. And even the few documents that might be as of yet non-public, because there's a few there that seem like it could be the case, all of them seem to be deprecated or obsolete, which certainly isn't the type of thing that you would expect from a modern day trove of documents out of the country's most infamously top secret facility. Bottom line, after taking the necessary time venturing into the world's most notable data breach forums and poking around a bunch of government, quote unquote, government files, it's not quite as spicy as what I would have hoped. The content they released actually turns out to be completely safe because it's already public. Nobody's kicking down your door if you download these files. As a result of that, I'll link it down below, right? The, the mega version, because really it's, just, it, it's innocuous. You're not going to get in trouble for having this. And it more so provides an opportunity for people to feel a short-lived sense of excitement rather than any sort of long-term groundbreaking impact. Certainly educational, don't get me wrong, but not actually a data breach or a leak or anything we didn't already know. That's it. If you want to support the channel as I do things like this, which is talk about whatever I want, whenever I want, there's a bunch of links down below. A special VPN deal that I already mentioned, locals and Patreon for monthly memberships and more, but I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching. Question everything and have a nice night.